Alright guys, TouchGrub here back again today. Some interesting news to discuss. The CDL has launched their official merchandise for the upcoming league and a lot of people are saying this is not what we we're at least hoping for but it may have been what some of us were expecting. We talked a while ago now about how the CDL had gone to the organisations and said look, you guys have been designing your own merchandise. You don't get to do that anymore. It's now our property. We're going to be designing our merchandise. We're going to be taking the cut that we want to take from it because it's our league after all. Twitter video player being lovely as well in the background. Um, and you know, you guys don't get to use your own designers to put your own brand onto things. It really does intrigue me, like, okay, yes, the jerseys are branded, but they're not branded, at least they haven't been designed in such a way. Effectively, it's all control C, control V, onto the next one, change the design, and ship it off. It's, it's incredible the way that Activision manages to finesse these organization owners because at the same time, Activision is not letting the uh, brands themselves control the merchandise where you can promote your brands, but they are they are letting the organizations control their own events and they have to host their own events probably under the guise that, oh, you can do it with your own style, you can, you know, promote your own brand in that sense. Um, whereas, of course, in both senses, it makes it easier for Activision because one, they get control of the merch and two, they don't have to run the events. So, um... You know, Activision are playing a blinder once again, but it doesn't necessarily make it great for us fans and us guys who would, you know, like to support the scene, right? Um, that's one of the big issues. I'm maybe, maybe I'm getting into a point that I'll go into a few minutes, but just to touch on things, esports' biggest problem right now as an industry is that it's super hard to get money out of people who are interested in esports. If you look at normal sports like football, um, American football, whatever, soccer, like a lot of people, they have the jerseys, they either attend the event or they pay per view to watch the games you know, on TV or online or whatever. In esports, it's almost impossible to get any of that monetization. And it's nice to be able to feel like you're supporting the industry by buying a jersey here or there. But when they're stupid expensive and when they're not even good, um, it makes it very difficult to do that but yeah like if you guys enjoyed the video subscribe if you're new as always i would greatly appreciate it a few things to go through then before we hop into that so um yeah get your tickets now for the la home series a couple of advertisements going around on this also renegade announced the team so this is uh, clearly the best team in the apac region they've been winning all the 2ks and stuff they were announced onto Renegades, an organization which is actually from Detroit. It's the Detroit Renegades. But in uh, CSGO, they've always been around the um, the APAC and Australia region. So they're picking up a, a team from Australia and New Zealand here. I'm not sure if any of these players are actually from New Zealand, but regardless, from, from down under regardless. So yeah, interesting to see this announcement. Pretty cool to see this organization back in the scene. There have been um, a few interesting things with this team going on in CSGO, but hopefully they can do something at the Minnesota event. Wanted to mention this news as well because uh, for those of you guys who know Jcap is awesome, this is honestly really tragic news. Um, that you know the the news that he passed away over the last few days. This is a guy who's been around the scene for a very long time. Um, you know a lot of the pros and uh, important members in the community have been really supporting of of him and you know the causes he's been fighting for. Um, I didn't want to go into too many details here. You guys can look into the story on your own if you guys would like. But you know if you were aware of uh, Jcap is awesome, he you know he had a channel he used to go to events all the time and there's been some really heartfelt uh, tributes to this guy all across the scene over the last day or so so didn't want to go into details but if you guys weren't aware and you guys have heard of jacob it's awesome um you know i, I guess i'd be the uh, the bearer of bad news here but yeah that just wanted to mention it regardless let's go on to some other things then wanted to run this past you guys didn't want to make it into an entire video, but uh, Hector shows us two of the other Huntsman logos. This is a video that came out from the NRG guys. I think they posted it on like Vimeo. I was very confused. But these two logos with the spiders on apparently were the other potentials. I don't really know what the spider is going on with Chicago. Maybe the maybe the anchor makes more sense. I don't really like the spider. Why would you have a spider in your thumbnail when some people of your fan base are going to be um, arachnophobic or whatever, and not many people like spiders anyway? I'm not sure why you do that. Personally, I think they've got done a decent job going down the route they have. And this is something that uh, Padaman, um, which is the London social media manager, pointed out yesterday. It seems like they've actually changed up the the uh, colour scheme slightly on the Chicago Huntsman logo. This is the old one on the right. The new one seems to be a slightly lighter shade of green. Um, some more contrast here on the axis. And then the colour scheme has changed slightly. So be interested to hear what you guys think of that. And of course, it's pretty relevant as we're going to go on to discuss in a couple of minutes time here. The merchandise and how that's all factoring in. Thanks to Don here and a few other people for pointing this out to me as well this is honestly a pretty big deal i could have done an entire video like centering around this topic but maybe we'll expand on it in future 
The Battle Beaver Tournament Stick is the official replacement to the old Cronus Max to eliminate Impalag. If you guys aren't aware, they had to introduce a thing called a Cronus Max a while ago that you could plug your controller into at an event and um, that prevented effectively Bluetooth interference because even if you plug your PS4 controller into the lead, all it does is charge. It doesn't actually make a wired connection. Um, even though I think the PS4 can tell you that it will make it a wired connection, it's it's even if it does do that, like literally it does make things a lot slower in terms of the input lag. And the Cronus Max also did slow things down, which caused issues with professionals. You know, let's not forget Karma at the end of the Black Ops 4 season was like, you know, I don't even want to come back if we're playing with the Cronus Max. Maybe part of the reasoning is because Battle Beaver have released this tournament stick, which they reckon is going to be a hell of a lot better. This is it on the website here. It's effectively a similar looking thing, but they reckon it completely eliminates the um, the input, or not completely eliminates, but really drastically reduces the input lag, which is exactly what you want to see. Sony Bluetooth average input speed 13 milliseconds, the Cronus Max goes down to 10.5 and they reckon the Battle Beaver tournament stick all the way down to 4.7, a marked improvement, um, effectively the smaller this number is, the better in terms of playing on a LAN environment is, is as best as possible, so you know it's even much better than the, uh, the Sony Bluetooth standards that really does create a very high standard. So hopefully this is what we go with going forwards. Let's go into it then. Call of Duty League, what would you rock on the big stage? Hoodie or jersey? The choice is yours. I like how they phrase this, implying like, you know, you have to choose a hoodie or a jersey. You must buy our product. Um, otherwise, you know, what, what are you going to rock on the big stage? Are you not a Call of Duty fan? Get authentic pro gear from our online store and show the world which Call of Duty League team you support couple of things here, we see Paris Legion, we see Atlanta Phase, we're like, yo, this could be pretty good. Um, even though this tweet only came out a couple of hours ago, the replies to this are not pretty by any means. So this is what the website's looking like, you get free shipping on all orders over $25, and keep in mind, pretty much everything on this website is over $25, so they pretend like, yo, this is a great deal, CDL 25, get your $25 um, you know, dollars free, free shipping, etc, and that's only US orders anyway, if you want to get it ordered elsewhere, unlucky. Um, but okay, this is what the logos are looking like. You want to get a replica away jersey? 75 bucks, no problem, no sweat. And we'll look in a second at how effectively these jerseys are not only very ugly, but it's literally control paste. I or control C, control V, copy and paste. I don't get the thought process here. It really frustrates me to see that some of the cracking designs that people have come up with for the jerseys and that were in existence with the leagues that have gone had great designers make some great merch, and then they had to cut that off just at the end of 2019 so that uh, the CDL and Activision could release this, you know, I don't want to go into explicits here, or expl ex uh, expletives or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, look, this is what we're looking at. Let's just go into the, you know, these images. So, Chicago, Dallas, Florida, Minnesota, Los Angeles, London, all the jerseys look the same. $75, man. Like, are, are you kidding me? This is incredibly expensive. I think I have a couple of esports jerseys. I have a Heretics jersey. I have a Lightning Pandas jersey. These cost, like, maybe 20 quid, something like that, which I think is pretty reasonable, and especially for the size of the organization. Right, okay, if you want to get an Opta Gaming jersey, you're going to expect to pay more money. But these are teams that are brand new to the league. They don't even necessarily have that much reputation behind them yet. 75 bucks seems pretty mental to me. Uh, maybe that's just me speaking, but honestly, like, this seems very expensive, especially for what they are. Like, you've got, okay, the name of the city, and all they've done here, like, who designed these? What they've done is they've taken the, um, the logo, I guess, the name of the city, off their logo, which is on the back, and they've just chucked it on the front. Like, they haven't even tried to make Chicago, like, flat or anything like that. The logo's here, then you've got this like mess, whatever is going on here with let's say the Dallas Empire for example, and just copy and paste that over everything. Then you've got some white ones, the Rocker, the Surge, the Legion, the Ultra, Atlanta Phase, Los Angeles Optic, like I guess some of these don't look terrible, but you know, I'm really not impressed. Um, I don't think I don't think it's possible to be impressed, especially when you look at the price. What like what would I pay for one of these? Let's say I'm a London fan. This looks pretty ugly already. The color scheme doesn't really work with the blue on black. Don't like it already. I might pay 20 quid for that if I really wanted to support the industry. 
as if I'm paying 75 bucks plus shipping over to the UK. Like, no chance. Um, if you guys want to go out and support the league, I do support it, right? But, like, it just doesn't feel to me like this is a legitimate way of doing it, right? If you want to support your creators, um, the people you like watching stream from the Call of Duty scene, the professional players, go through your Twitch subscriptions, all of that format. You can probably even subscribe to the Twitch Call of Duty channel when it gets announced exactly what we're going to be streaming on this year. You know, those are ways to support the league, but it just doesn't seem like this is worth it. And it feels like I'm just getting fleeced by Activision. Um, if I go down this route, and okay, here's some versions in white. The logo is really small. Um, look, personally, I'm just not impressed. We can scroll down the website and we can find similar things. Let's find some hoodies here, actually, while I'm at it. I guess they call them sweatshirts. That probably should do. So, yeah, give it a second to load. Okay, we got some hoodies. A hundred bucks for a hoodie. Like, if a jersey wasn't bad at $75, I understand that, you know, hoodies may be slightly more expensive. And, you know, I think, an, I think a hoodie's expensive if you're paying 50, 60 quid, let alone, like, 80 um, quid is slang for pounds or whatever in the UK. So, and look, it's just copy and paste, mate. Who made these? I don't understand it. Like, it, it really it really frustrates me to see some of the great guys that worked on this stuff over at the Call of Duty League, um, or at least at the individual organizations. And then the COD League has been like, yeah, we'll handle this, and uh, and released a load of stuff, which I don't reckon is going to sell. Like, you know, $100 for a hoodie, legitimately more than the NFL. Like, it, it's pretty mental. Same, same template for all the teams. Tragic. Hopefully in future teams are allowed to be more creative. And, um, and like, that's what happened. I just wanted to show you guys this. So from at Domiar on uh, Twitter, you guys can go check them out down in the uh, description box below. These are some alternative jersey designs. And you may look through this and think, oh, you know, none of these are spectacular, which is, of course, fair enough. But like, at least the individual jerseys you're looking at here have some individual character to them. Like Atlanta Fays, uh, you know, Chicago Huntsman. Like a few of these I think actually look really kind of nice. Uh, sorry, you can't see all of it on your screen. I'll just zoom out a little bit so um, so it fits kind of nicely. But you can see what I mean. This is Florida. Like, for example, I think the Paris Legion one looks really kind of nice. Um, the uh, the subliners is kind of good as well. I actually really like the uh, Chicago Huntsman style here and maybe the Dallas Empire as well. There's a few of these that I think are really good. A few of these that maybe aren't great but all of them at least have more character and something more going on than what the CDL has decided to release. Really frustrating that, um, you know, Domi Art says a reimagined Call of Duty League and it's just, you know, come up with these in, I, I don't know how long this would have taken him to come up with, but this isn't like months and months of work he's put in into these designs, but arguably it looks way better than what we've seen before. And this London one looks uh, eerily similar or basically identical to what London Royal Ravens themselves released way back in October there, this limited edition jersey as Pada points out on Twitter here is their social media guy that I've talked about this was the jersey they put out way back in October and unfortunately you know this was only like a five day limited edition thing and after that guess what like it disappeared off the market and London Royal Ravens couldn't do anything else again because the Call of Duty League decided oh yeah we're gonna handle it and um, there was only a limited time where they could actually do any deals and as Pada's saying it like you know Sad, sad face, right, given the situation. Royal Ravens would, I'm sure, love to be able to promote their own merchandise. And as I said at the beginning of the video, like, Activision is playing a blinder from their perspective. They've got a situation where they control all the merchandise, they get, like, the vast majority of the revenues, if there even are any revenues of people buying this stuff, and at the same time, it's the organisations that have to go and put on the events on their own back, and they get to promote their brand in that manner, but in terms of making merchandise and promoting your brand in that manner, unlucky Activision has got it unlock. Um, those are some of my thoughts today. I'd be interested to hear yours down below. Like if you guys enjoyed, subscribe if you are new as always. I'll be reading the comments as, as usual. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.